Good evening everybody and welcome to Kerbal School, a new series starting on the Metal Poet channel. And yeah, I figured it would be a good idea for somebody to actually give some beginner friendly lessons in how to play KSP. Now that the final patch has been released, since this will be the first set of lessons on it, there won't be out of date in time. And unlike all the other tutorials on YouTube. And I'm going to cover some things that aren't normally covered in those. And in the form of a playthrough. So before we jump in, I just want to give a short word on mods. Oh, and I'm going to mention that these streams are going to go on YouTube as well. Um, in terms of mods, there is no need to have mods to follow these lessons. They are completely optional here. I'm deliberately using a very lightly modded setup. However, the mods I am using are primarily visual. They just make the game prettier. So there are three that change actual gameplay. I'm going to run through them very quickly. One is called Kerbal Engineer, which is just an informational mod that gives you access to a lot of information in a useful windows. All this stuff is actually visible in the game, but having them conveniently accessible like that is nice for streaming and also um, for teaching and makes the game more f a little more fun in my experience i would advise it um but if you are on a console or you just don't have it don't feel bad the other is others are career evolution and planes of purpose these are contract pack mods um all they do is really streamline the career mode of the game this isn't necessary if you don't have access to them the normal version works fine it's just a bit more grindy or full of more detours which don't really flow well for teaching or streaming but if you prefer to play the vanilla contracts that's fine if you like the more streamlined version that's fine too um, that said if you'd like to have the exact same set of mods that I use um, I created a CCAN mod pack which I put on my discord server which is linked in the chat right now so if you want to grab that uh, mod pack feel free you can then install the ccan software which is also linked there and instantly have the exact same setup i'm using which is convenient that said if you don't have the game i would highly recommend it i bought it in 2013 eight years later i'm still playing it and it's the most played game i've ever owned it's not very expensive even at full price and it's often on special even with both expansions it's not very expensive um, and it is the best value for money I've ever gotten out of a game. It is really worth it. And it's a really fun game. It's really fantastic. It's educational. Um, but it makes learning really fun. And as games go, I've never spent better money, like I said. So I would highly advise it. I would suggest if you can get it on PC rather than console, the console version is a little harder because this game really does play better with a keyboard and mouse. But if you don't have access to a PC, then needs must. Then with that, let's get into the actual game. So the first thing I want to go over is some settings. There are a couple of settings that I advise you to change from the default. So if you go into settings, the first tab is general. In general, um, there are, for starters, this one, advanced tweakables. I suggest turning that on. It's off by default. It is a really good idea to turn it on because it gives you access to some really cool features like the auto strats. Um, then I would also turn on show extended burn indicator which is really, really nice because that saves you a little maths. You got to do fast in your head otherwise. And yeah, I think that's it on this page. Um, under graphics, you can decide to adjust these. Um, this is very much like any other game. Um, you could switch on um, Set this to your resolution. I always play full screen. I, I suggest it's a better way to play it, but whatever you want, really. You can tweak these for um, to balance between performance and prettiness. Biggest catch here is terrain scatters. I've got them turned off. There's nothing wrong with turning them on. They're quite cool. 
but I find that we with the breaking ground expansion where there's interactable and scannable objects on the surface it is nicer if there isn't also um, things on the surface that um, isn't interactable and scannable that you have to look for it so I keep it turned on these days and that's really the only settings you need to worry about um, when you're starting out this is one of the few games where even I never actually change the keyboard layouts it is there's just too many keys that matter so let's go ahead and create a new game. So we're going to say start new. We're going to give it a name. And very importantly, pick a flag for our game. I've got a mod pack that adds more flags, but you can really um, do whatever you want. I've got to delete that confederate flag from there. Wow, can't believe somebody would put that in. Uh, that's our flag. Right, that's our flag. Cool. And let's look at the difficulty options. Now, when you if you're starting out for the first time, I suggest leaving most of these on defaults. Um, however, there are a couple of things I would suggest uh, modifying. First of all, if you're a first time player, I would turn off enable Kerbal Experience. Leave that for when you're more experienced and skilled. What that does is, if it's off, then you have access to all the auto steering ab abilities that a steel pilot should have from the start. If it's on, then you gotta train your people up and that's difficult when you're still learning how to play the later game yourself. So I would suggest turning that one off um, these ones work the game a little harder, but they're not huge factors. So I would turn them on. They just give you a little more fun. You're not going to have any kobolds die from G-forces. They'll just pass out and recover. Then I suggest turning on these two. Require signal for control and plasma blackout. They part of the combat system. And what they do is just make it a little more fun you actually have to make sure your probes have radio signal to be able to steer them um, at a little challenge without being excessively hard and it's quite realistic I would suggest leaving extra ground stations on otherwise you have to build a radio network around your home planet and that's really not worth it now if you're not playing with mods this is all you have here if you are um, especially if you play with my mod pack you want to then go to contract configuration now these things on the left here, those are all the things that come from the mods. And we want to turn almost all the stock contracts off because we'll be using those instead, with some exceptions. Specifically, we want to keep robotic arm contracts because when Career Evolution was created, robotic arm feature didn't exist yet. So we get that from here. And likewise with the Sentinel contracts because Sentinel didn't exist then. And that is really it. Everything else can stay on defaults. So let's start ourselves a game. Now when you come in, Gene Kerman, a reference to famous NASA um, Lee Senior Gene Kelly will welcome you. And you can read that when you play for yourself. So, this is the Kerbal Space Center. Um, there are a number of buildings here which each play a, um, particular roles. You can instantly access them with this menu on the left or just by clicking or right clicking on them over there. As we build, play, we'll be able to upgrade these. This is only true in career mode. If you play in sandbox or science mode, then they are always maxed from the start. So let's have a quick run through them. From the left, we have the runway. That's where planes get launched from. Then we have the launch pad where rockets get launched from. Um, the tracking station is where your satellite dishes go that you know you to communicate with things in space. Uh, 
the mission control is pretty much where you get your contracts from. The vehicle assembly building is where you build rockets. The space plane hangar is where you build aeroplanes. Um, the astronaut complex is where you hire um, new astronauts. The research and development building is where you unlock um, techno new technologies with your science points. And the administration building allows you to set various strategies and refine how you want your space program to operate. We'll look at all these things in more detail as we go along. For now, let's enter mission control. If we go to available, we'll see there's one new one contract we can get. The launch your first rocket contract, which asks us to launch your uh, launch our first rocket. It must be a new vessel and it must be uncrewed. If you're playing vanilla, this will be um, a crewed mission. But otherwise, it's not significantly different. Now, the parts that you start out with should be more than adequate to do this mission. So we can start with a probe core and this one the stay putnik is very much based on the look of the um, sputnik probe which was the first um, probe ever to end the first satellite ever to reach orbit so there's no fuel tanks on it, but we do have a small solid rocket booster now having as you can see these pieces just stick together like legos those little green balls show you where they can stick. Some things can stick anywhere. Most pieces you need to stick green balls to green balls. Over here on the right, we have the stage indicator. Now, right now, there's one stage of everything. What we really want is two stages. We want our engine to fire, and then we want to be able to activate our parachute. We don't want our parachute firing from the start. So stage one, stages count backwards. We'll fire a rocket, and then when we're ready, we trigger stage two, and we enter our parachute. Now on the left here, various things are divided various countries. Let's go to the science category, and we can stick the thermometer and a barometer on, which are the only parts we have unlocked. Those two are Kerbal Engineer parts, but they're already built in. That said, let's put a few of these on, like four. If I hit the X key, it changes this field here. You can also just click on it. That's the replication field. It's currently in four field replication, so any piece I put on gets placed on evenly divided in fours. It allows you to easily create um, symmetrical designs. Next to it is the, is the snap feature. But if, if you put it on snap mode, then anything can only go in specific positions. If it's in smooth mode, anything can go anywhere. This particularly applies to these features up here, which we will go over in a little while. Um, but that allows you to control when you want to, uh, what type of precision placements you want to do. Now let's put some wings on because otherwise our rocket's going to be very unstable. Now we don't really need more than four. So if you hit shift X, we can go backwards. Instead of increasing our symmetry, we reduce it by one. Now we've got a symmetry of three. That's left shift, by the way. Left and right shift do different jobs. So currently we've been working in this in mode, the place tool mode. Next to it is the move tool mode. If you click on that and then click on a part, you get these three arrows, which allow you to find control placement. You can move things up and down, left and right, forward and back. And it allows you to clip parts together for some designs that benefit from that. We're just gonna move our wings down a little bit. Next to it is the rotate tool, which brings up the, this little wheel, which allows you to rotate things in 360 degrees in any axis. In this case, we want to use smooth mode because we want to very delicately just tilt them slightly to the right like that. This will cause the rocket to spin, which will make it a lot more stable and allow us to get a little higher. It's gyroscopic stabilization. With unmanned vehicles, it's a very good way to make vehicles stabler. The final one is the reroute tool. We will look at that in a more editor for, um, in a more detail in the future. But basically, um, the first part you place is the root part. If you pick that up the whole rocket moves if you need to change it or you want to put a different probe core on or something you can do that to reroute and now your root part is a different part 
Um, this window above comes from Kerbal Engineer. It is a Delta V indicator. Um, now, I will go into what Delta V is in more detail um, later in the lesson. For now, just know what it is, that it's there. Um, you can also see it over here. That's the in-game version, but I find Kerbal V's window nicer, but use whichever you like. And Kerbal will give you a little um, shorthand over here too. It's a little less powerful though, because I can tell this thing whether I want to see atmospheric or va vacuum values. And I can ask it to give me values based on different places. So if I want to see the TWR on Midmiss, I can just tell it. So this is our first little rocket. Let's do our first flight. So we've got a couple of buttons here on the top right. The new button is you will clear the siege editor and let you build a new vehicle. That the open button lets you open something you've previously saved. The save button. We'll save this. We're not going to name this. These early missions are, are never are always once off. We're going to hit launch. And we should find ourselves loading onto the launch pad. And looking at a rocket. Okay. Now, before we go on. I'm not going to go through all of these. Most of these buttons below this yellow line are mod buttons. You don't really need to worry about them. Um, I hardly ever you touch them. They can pretty much all stay on defaults. These buttons here um, are access to various in-game features. We will go into them one at a time uh, over time. For now, the important ones is this one, which tells you how much fuel you have. Um, and this one, which has your mission highlights. Um, the other V tools and such, the rest isn't that important here. I wonder is though, this this is KSpedia. It's the in-game help and it lets it has tons and tons of useful information. So if you need to look something up, this is where you can quickly do it. And it's available anywhere in the game. Now, by default, when you launch, you look at this screen here. This HUD has a number of tiles all based on the things you would see if you were actually firing a real rocket. So Let's have a quick look over them. Top left, we have a calendar, which just tells us the date, and also time warp. Time warp we'll go into in detail later. And next to that, an indicator of our network connectivity. This is telling us that we have radio signal and full control. Over here, we have a speedometer and an altimeter. It tells us how, far, how high up we are and how fast we're going. So you really only need to worry about the um, altimeter here. If you mouse over left, that will trigger your abort action group. We'll learn about that later. There's a button to switch on your lights, deploy landing gear, and deploy brakes. Down in the bottom, we have this big ball here. This is called the nav ball. Now, nav balls are based on, on a design that was actually used in real airplanes and still is to this day. Now, the real one is a mechanical device. It contains a magnet uh, inside a plastic ball that floats in a jar of water with that stuff printed on it. And because it's a magnet, it acts as a compass and rotates. So the ball always points the same direction as the plane turns. So you can tell which way you're flying. That's the heading down here, HDG. Um, but it also tells you if you're flying up or down because it's floating. Um, so... Nabal, very useful. We will learn more details about it over time. For now, the important bits to know is north. Is, uh, you, when you launch, will be at the bottom. East, 90 degrees to your right. Um, that's pretty much the most important. 180 is south, and that's at the top. And 270 is to the left, that's west. To the left of the screen, we have our stages, the same ones we created in the editor. And below that, the ready to go button. The rest of these things I hardly ever even use. They're really not useful, all that important. So for now, we can hit the T key, which turns on SAS. That's just um, enables our auto steering capabilities. Then Z to max out our throttle. Now this isn't actually a factor because we're using a solid rocket and they are always at max throttle, but it's good to get into the habit because you won't always be using those. And then hit spacebar to trigger your first stage. Now we are flying. 
Now we can't really steer this one. We don't really have to because it's got the spin stabilizer. It'll steer itself. Now you'll see this started flashing at the top here. That's informing us that we have some milestones we achieved. And we've completed our first flight contract. But we haven't done any science because we forgot. That happens. So grab one. Try right clicking on one of the. Okay, we'll wait until we're done spinning. Actually, this is a good time to show what you do when you make a mistake. Let's revert this flight. No, wait, that option. Yeah, revert to launch. That's one of your options. Now, very often it's fun to let the thing crash before you revert, but. If you haven't saved yet or anything, and if you haven't switched view vessels or something, you can use this option. So we can actually log the pressure data here on the runway. Keep. And log the temperature. And keep. Then I suggest, because we're going to want to do more, right click on another one and hit that little pin, thumbtack, which means keep this, which will keep this open. And then for that one, that'll allow us to do it while do another in flight. And then when we land, we'll want to do another. And we can do as many of these things open as we want. But I think that should be adequate for our needs. So now we can proceed with our launch again. So hit T, hit Z, hit space. You'll end up getting very used to those controls. We'll just let it fly as however high it can get. We get our little notifications again because we're doing this with enough. Since we're in, in flight, let's log the temperature. Keep. And the pressure data. And keep. And then we can unpin those two because we've got them now. And now we just let it fly. Now you can see we're flying almost pretty close to perfectly straight. That's because of those that slight twist in the wings giving us this natural spin, which allows us to be much more stable than we otherwise would have been. And voila, almost 10 kilometers up into the air. So we'll let it fly until whatever point it stops. Over there, you'll see something called apoapsis height. Apoapsis is the highest point in your orbit. At this stage, our orbit is just a straight line up, so it's just how high we're going to get. But um, there you can see that instantly on screen. That's thanks to Kerbal Engineer. Um, I will explain how to see that in more detail as we move, and how to see it in the basic game when we move to more advanced rockets. For now, with this simple first rocket, that's enough. And we can close this. We don't really need Flight Engineer's features right now, which is Global Engineer, the mod that I mentioned. But I see we've started dropping, so we hit our second stage. And that'll activate our, our parachute, so we can bring this rocket home safely and get the science we collected. And we've got a few more milestones broken with that first flight. We have an altitude record broken. We've broken a speed record. Another altitude record and, an, and a distance record. And down, now we go. Of course, the wings are still doing their job. Because the parachute is on the top of the rocket, it, once it opens fully, it will flip it apart. But initially, your parachute is going to only do a partial open like that. That slows the rocket down, but that does not bring it to a landing um, speed. It's just enough to get you started. Basically, it's the first phase of the slowdown. That's really the way to think of it. By the way, this, mer this Merlot is delicious, in case you were wondering. Mm -hmm. So, down we go. 
Now I'm hoping we'll have a little bit of a bigger crowd next time. But I guess two days before Christmas was not the best time to launch this, especially I, having skipped twice. But I'd been quite ill and I didn't want to postpone it again. And I'm finally feeling a bit better, though my throat's still sore. At least I can talk. And there we go, full parachute mode. At this stage, let's look at time warping. Because if we have to wait for this thing to reach the ground, it's going to take a very long time. Luckily, the game lets you speed up time when it's suitable. Now, when you're in atmosphere, you can only do what's called physical time warp. There are basically two types. Normal time warp freezes the physics engine um, with the advantage of being most unstable and you can go really fast. Physical time warp keeps doing the physics stuff only a lot faster, so you have a chance of risk ripping things apart, but it's very convenient. And you can only go up to four times. You can force physical time warp. Physical time warp will default when you're in atmosphere, but you can force it which allows you to use it, for example, when doing long engine burns by hitting shift and full stop. Full stop will increase your time warp, comma will decrease it, shift will force physical versions of the above, and that's right shift. So right shift plus full stop to get to, to four times time warp. If we want to go to three, we get we hold right shift and hit comma. And now we can now it's a much shorter wait because while it's still only traveling at 3 meters per second and it still has to go down about 300 meters, it's doing so four times faster in real, than real time. Another useful thing is the altitude terrain reading here from um, Kerbal Engineer. That tells you the real height above the land, which this is the height above sea level. So that's not always accurate for landing purposes and such. Useful to know. It's a good idea to stop physical time warp just before touchdown. Just makes the game a little safer. So, now that we're here, we can collect the, the signs from where we landed. Ooh, but we've run out of electricity, so that's not even an option. We'll just recover. But we'll have a little bit of signs now, which allows us to make a little progress in the game. And that's how it goes. You do science. Use them to buy better technology, build better rockets and airplanes. So, now that we've got some science, we got 33 points worth. We'll go here into the research and development building. And let's have a look. There's the basic vehicles option, which gives us a small wheel, some and some basic building blocks, including a battery. There's basic aviation, which is everything we need to build a small aeroplane, and basic rocketry. So what do we choose? Oh, well, the good news is we have enough science to choose all three. So basic rocketry will give us a few new um, engines and basic fuel tanks, so we can use liquid fuel. So we'll start with 10 points of science for that, 10 points in basic aviation, and 10 points in basic vehicles. Later, we'll have to be a little more careful about what we choose. But for now, we can use base, those, but that stuff we got from basic vehicles to get a little more science early on. So we'll just grab a probe core. And then we'll grab ourselves a structural panel like this one. W rotates parts up and down. Q rotates around that axis and E in the other direction. W and S up and down. A and D rotates like this. Worth knowing. Yes, KD, there's a new KSP2 being worked on. The reason why I said 1.12 is the final update of KSP is because the KSP team has now joined the KSP2 team, which was originally done by a different company and a different but it's been delayed many times. Nobody knows when it's going to be due, and in the meantime, we'll play this. And who knows? It might end up sucking, and then we'll come back and play this anyway. Um, but for now, yes, it is coming. But um, since it's not out yet, and it could be years yet, I wouldn't wait for it. But that is true. They are working on a new version. And, well, hello. Thank you for joining. It's nice to see you, Katie. How's it going? 
Okay, so let's stick some wheels on this. Now, when we're in the um, airplane building, by default, it uses a different kind of symmetry, which is called mirror symmetry, where typically you can only have two times symmetry, but everything is perfectly aligned crosswise. This method, this type of symmetry is really useful when you're building aeroplanes. It's also really useful for building rovers like this, which is why I came and built this in here. Um, I don't know if they will, they might. It's also being built in Unity like KSP1. So the platform support is there, but um, the same concerns that, uh, that stopped them from doing it with KSP might apply, which is that KSP has it's quite heavy on resources for a Unity game. Let's stick some batteries on here because these wheels are electric. Um, so whether they'll be willing to take that um, risk, I don't know. Now this is about as simple as a um, rover can be, but it'll do for our purposes. Now we can, we've also unlocked basic flat solar panels. We can pop two of those on there, which means this thing can recharge itself. And then, and this is something I absolutely recommend you do if you play this game. You can stick one of each of those on there. We'll be able to redo this later with a crew team to get more, but for now we will stick to this. And then we're going to want an antenna. We can pop it over there, I think. And we might as well keep it extended by default. That means we can transmit sites. I'm not going to name this because this is another once-off. We'll just do that so we can reload it if this, and hit launch. This will, because we built this in the airplane hangar, it'll launch on the runway. Okay. So, right click on our thermometer pin it, right click on our barometer, pin that, lock the pressure data, transmit. We're getting slightly less by transmitting than if we just received, um, picked it up, but it's worth it because this thing can drive around, so we can go to a whole lot of places here. There's little bits of science like this at every building in the Kerbal Space Center, and you can pick it all up early on, which gives you a little bit of a bootstrap for your space program. So as soon as you step off the runway, you are now in a new biome known as the shores. So let's log the pressure data in the shores and the temperature and transmit. Doing this transmission uses up electricity. If we run out, we'll have to wait because, but luckily we got solar panels, which can recharge. As soon as we finish, you can already see it's recharging. So the bar is filling up again. If you want to keep an eye on any of these windows, it, um, you can click on it and that will lock it open until you unlock it by clicking on it again. So we'll just drive straight ahead here. This is standard WASD controls. For the moment, those are the only controls you have to worry about. There are other controls that matter, but um, what you need to worry about for now is standard WASD for movement. When you're in three dimensions, Q and E does rotation, which isn't, it makes sense based on what are. When we get to translation uh, movements, I will explain those controls. But luckily, you don't need them that much if you know, what you, if you know a little trick that I will teach. But that's all for a future lesson. For now, as we reach, if we drive into here, the airplane hangar's outside area. This is actually a new biome, even though it doesn't show up there. And there's fresh science here. So we can log this and transmit it, and then turn to the right, because there's several more buildings here. So we'll flip around like this and go to the astronaut center. Once we're inside it, we'll do the same thing. Transmit, transmit, and then move over here to the administration building. 
where I think we will want to stop and first recharge our batteries a little. Now we can speed through that a bit by time warping. Let time move a little faster and the wait for batteries to recharge is then much quicker than it would have been in real life. Okay, then let's grab the signs from here where we stopped. While we're here, let's press F5 and do a quick save. You can only quick save vehicles if, um, if the vehicle you're in is, is landed, if that vehicle is not moving. While in space, that doesn't apply, but for things that are on the ground, they have to be stationary to quick save. So since we had to be stationary there anyway, so we'll arrive over here past the R&D building. And grab ourselves some science. And then rotate to the right a little so we can get over here to the vehicle assembly building. Collect some environmental signs here. Now, make a gradual right to get to the tracking station. Right. Finally. Sharp left, move ahead. Hmm, we're almost out of battery again. We'll sort that out in a minute. This is the crawler way, which is pretty much the railway track set that is used to take your rockets. Whoops, I think we just lost one of our wheels. Luckily, oh no, we destroyed one battery, but we're okay. Let's just stop here and get recharged, which might require us to wait till morning. There we go. Remember, full stop and comma. Now we can get the signs from the crawler way. And we finish off at the end of the crawler way where the launch pad is. By the way, SAS also works on rovers, though they're not super useful. A little feature you can actually use is change the control point here. Some things have a forward control point and looks at the state button is on one of them. Would you have them? They're very useful if you're using a rover. But it's fine. We are very nearly where we need to be. So we'll start throttling down. And upon arriving here, hit brakes. Lock the temperature. Oh! I hit the wrong button. But there doesn't seem to be anything here anyway. Okay, and recover the vessel. That way we get our money back, except for the one battery we blew up. Alright, then we got another 40 science. Now, the next tier of science costs 25, so we could actually unlock something from the next tier. I'm not quite ready to do man technology yet. Flight control, though, has some very useful things. As does general rocketry. I'm wondering where do we start. I think let's grab this first. Now, 
I pretty much decided we're not doing aeroplanes tonight. We'll do an aeroplane focused, some aeroplane contracts on Monday. For tonight, let's continue with the rockets. Although, shall we do one aeroplane? No. Let's keep it simpler. We'll do just this for now. So we're going to accept upper atmosphere uncrewed, which is very simple. Get a rocket to the upper atmosphere. That's above 18 kilometers. And we'll take the Carmen line, though that'll be a separate contract. Now at this point, we can afford to upgrade a building. And I always recommend the first two you should upgrade to level one. Are these two, followed by here and here. But there's good reasons to do mission control first. Firstly, I let you get more contracts. But secondly, you need mission control and tracking stations to unlock maneuver nodes. And you want those before you start orbiting. So, that's one down. Now let's go work on our first contract. With the new parts we've unlocked, this should be quite a bit easier. So we still got only one probe core available. Now we've got... At this point, we should only want two of these because there's only going to be the upper atmosphere. We've got the lower stuff and wherever we land. So that's fine. Two of each. And we haven't got... Oh, we do have... We've unlocked decouplers. That's useful because it means we can do stage... We can drop stages. It'll be a lot easier to bring this back safely if we're not carrying a rocket drone with it. Now I suspect that this is a little longer solid rocket booster is all we need for this. That we will still need wings and we're still going to want to spin stabilize this. Just like the last one. So other than that, it's very similar to the one we had before. Which is fine. Incremental progress is how you learn in this game. So, all of what I'm doing now, you saw, just saw me doing before. So, this should all look familiar to you. But do shout out if you have any questions. Okay, I'm not going to name this again. These are very much once-off sounding rockets. The only thing that's new is that our stages now have decouplers. So, let's have a look at our stages quickly before we take off. So... As you can see here, rocket is in one stage. That stage contains the decoupler and the parachute. You normally have two options. You can either put the decoupler and the parachute in the same stage or separate them. In most cases, you actually want to keep them separate so that you can trigger the decoupler before the parachute. In this case, we might as well keep them together because we don't want to do everything in Atmo. So, with a little luck, this will be able to get above 18 kilometers. Let's find out. In space. There we go. We'll start spinning slowly at first and rapidly faster, which should allow us to fly very straight up. And these are pretty much the last time you'll ever fly pretty straight up. But for these early sounding rockets, that is actually the way you want to go. Sorry, I am still a bit congested from the bad flu I had. And it is flu. I did a COVID test this morning to confirm. Oh, we're not just going to hit at 18 kilometers. We're going to leave the atmosphere. I wasn't expecting that. That's going to complete both contracts. Right, so... Plug the temperature. And the pressure. We're not going to have anything for landing. But that's okay. We will want to get from space. Which we reach at 70 kilometers in Kerbal Space Program. We're just completing both contracts. Right, log pressure data. Keep. That's 
than one we already used. If I can just get a successful click on that. The fact that we're still spinning is very annoying. And making it a little hard. That's the one we already used. We need the other one. There we go, log temperature. And we are gradually heading downwards. So, because of that, we'll stage, which will activate our parachute and drop our solid rocket booster. We can time warp up a bit until we hit the atmosphere at which point we can switch to physical time warp as we wait for a fall that will hopefully land end in a soft landing we don't have any heat shields or anything on this but hopefully we'll get a little lucky or if not we'll get our first explosion there will be plenty to come I think our parachute survived yay that should be a successful mission well it looks like we're gonna hit land on the grasslands we could have gotten that biome but space is worth more so not being able to get everything I went for the more valuable one We can see we're dropping a little slower than last time because this one weighs less. We don't have the rocket still attached to it. We just pretty much over there, that little marker tells us where the Gulf Space Center is. You can see we've drifted off a little. But that would be because the planet turns around its axis, and while we were in space, it was rotating. But we weren't in space very long, so we came down here. And we got both contracts with one launch. That is something that's always worth aiming for. If you can do multiple contracts with one launch, then that'll save you a lot of money. Because you don't need money you can you, you don't need money for multiple launches. So it's a very good way to play profitably and not run out of cash. Right, let's go spend that lovely science. We've got 72, not quite enough to get all three, but enough to get two. Basic construction, air and nose gun is good, service bay is good. Some useful things here. And flight control also has very useful things, more useful right now than manned technology because we're not really doing mad flights yet that's oh i accidentally grabbed this i guess we're doing mad flights earlier than planned still that's just about an hour into things normally these streams last 90 minutes but i am still a bit ill so i'm gonna cut this one short and this is also a fairly logical place to stop tonight um that gives you enough to get started feel if you play along at home feel free to um experiment and do some more if you want but if you can master what we've done up to this point that's a good start and monday we'll continue from here including looking at our first airplane design missions thank you so much for joining me this um this stream and this whole series will also be on my YouTube channel so do look out for it for it there if you missed it or if you didn't see all of it and hopefully it will be of use to you thank you and see you guys Monday and in the meantime it, 
if you celebrate it, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate some other winter holiday, enjoy it. And happy holidays. Goodbye.